morning friends welcome once again to the cc edit live lecture dear friends with our ongoing series on children with special needs so far we have conducted a numerous sessions and we have tried to understand about uh, the various aspects and the various perspectives uh, regarding the children with the special needs uh, we have discussed so far about various impairments uh, through these uh, edit sessions dear friends in this session today we are going to talk on visual impairment we would be understanding about what is visual impairment and uh, what are the provisions what are the policies uh, that are available that could be implemented and uh, what else could be done uh, for the upliftment of um, the children with the special needs uh, especially those uh, who are uh, there with the visual impairment so for this discussion dear friends we have again with us in our studios dr neelima sthana dr neelima sthana is assistant professor uh, in um, department of education Lady Irwin College, University of Delhi. So, without wasting any time, I would like to welcome our guest, Dr. Neelima Sthana. Dr. Sthana, welcome to the Edison Thank lecture. You. So, today we are going to discuss about uh, the visual impairment yeah. specifically. Yeah. So, over to you, ma'am. Thanks a lot, Kitika. So, today, in continuation of my previous lectures, I am again talking on the same topic. Uh, children with special needs and specifically the education of children with special needs with reference to visual impairment and uh, visual impairment uh, come uh, I will discussing about low vision and blindness because visual impairment includes low visions and that low vision is uh, again there are various degrees in low vision. Uh, first of all, I would like to start with a very famous personality, an artist, sculptor, uh, Francois Rodin of France, Paris. Uh, just to motivate people who are having low vision and uh, Mr. Rodin was born in uh, France in November 1940 and uh, he was uh, Greatly distressed at a young age, he was unable to see figures down drawn on the blackboard and subsequently struggled to follow complicated lessons written on the blackboard, usually in this in his maths and science classes. So, he was very much frustrated due to his uh, poor vision and subsequently actually he was, uh, he left this school and at the age of uh, 13, he developed a skill as an artist and soon began taking formal art classes and perhaps due to these reasons he chose sculptors as his medium of expression one that is more tactile than visual. He is considered one of the best sculptors of all time and we all know that a person who is having, who is, uh, so, um, uh, having some kind of visual impairment uh, usually gets benefit from the tactile senses and uh, the famous uh, the, uh, the, his uh, piece of art is Burgers of Calais shows the emotion of six city leaders when they surrendered their lives and city to the con conquering English. Breaking the tradition Robin showed these men with the weight of defeat on their bodies and the fear of death on their faces and these sculptor figures demonstrate Robin's understanding of human condition and one can uh, just imagine and uh, gaze the skill of uh, this person though he was blind but he created beautiful this piece of art. So somewhere along the way you may lose something you thought was important but everything you need to fulfill you is inside you are right in front of your eyes. You just have to reach. It won't be easy, but it will be a great adventure. Uh, written by Eric Wellmeyer. And although we act on information gained through our sight, we seldom give much thought to the process of seeing. We always uh, 
learn through looking at things through seeing but we never give man, much importance to this process which is process of seeing and when the child takes birth comes to this world continuously the child learns through his uh, or her visual senses we usually use our, our this sense uh, that is vision in our work recreation prefer learning by reading rather than listening for self defense for example during work we usually read and write uh, see and uh, continuously do our work whether we are teaching or doing some kind of uh, work in hospital or doing some thing at home we always work and we use our vision recreation whether watching a tv or reading a magazine or watching a movie or any theatrical performance we use our vision we prefer learning by reading rather than by listening usually we try to understand through books after reading uh, majorly we listen to the lectures but we learn a lot when we go through the text personally and for self defense also vision and hearing are distinct senses we call vision and hearing as distinct senses because these two senses always alert us um, of some kind of risk or some kind of uh, ha um, performer of the nature of the environment so people with visual disabilities have limited use of their sight but with systematic instructions advances in technology and elimination of barriers associated with stereotypes and discrimination most can lead fully integrated and independent lives and i would like to explain a little bit about self defense whenever uh, we walk on the road we always look at the back or the front or the sides just to avoid any kind of risk or any kind of accident uh, and these kind of um, senses uh, alert us always of some kind of uh, good thing or bad thing of the environment around around us so when people are visually uh, impaired or there is some visual disabilities it is it becomes a challenge for them to overcome those difficulties so whether a person is born blind or loses their sight at some late point in their lifetime the inability to see can make everything a person does more challenging of course challenges are meant to be overcome and we all admire those who rise above most above the most different or difficult challenges now i would like to discuss a few famous personalities just to tell you people that uh, there is wo a world beyond our uh, limitations also we can overcome our challenges and do wonders in this world and nothing is impossible the only thing is how much we can uh, empower our people who are having some kind of disability specifically visual disability so i will start with a uh, lady named helen keller and she was the most she is the most famous visually impaired person of all times a woman who overcame virtually uh, all the obstacles to live to live not only an ordinary life but an extraordinary life born in 1880 in alabama a childhood illness left keller deaf and blind at the age of 18 months and though her parents were told to place the child in an institution and that she would never be anything close to normal they fought to give young helen a chance though she made little progress as a young child keller's life completely at age 7 changed at the age of 7 when she began being tutored by a young teacher uh, known as annie sullivan so she uh, through a unique and uh, amazing teaching style and patient uh, patient approach her teacher sullivan taught keller no, no, not only to speak but to read braille write and play music 
Keller's progress astounded family and friends and Keller continued to amaze as she graduated from, uh, from a college and married an, and began writing the first of numerous published magazine and journal articles. Her book, The Story of My Life was a worldwide bestseller and has been published in more than 50 languages. So she uh, began to write a very uh, creative writer she was. She got so many prizes also and she was known for her inspiring speeches about overcoming all obstacles. Keller summed her up life as uh, this, character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, ambition inspired and success achieved. So we can say it is not an easy task, it is a huge challenge, a huge patience is required, but it is, it should be the ambition, the will and the training and uh, support of the people, you can make uh, visually challenged a marvelous person. Uh, the other, you all would have heard about him, Steve Wonder, the famous, famous uh, singer, songwriter of all time and uh, he thrilled music lovers for, a, for, a, for decades. Aside from being one of the most talented and prolific singer-songwriter of all time, Wonder has accomplished it all. Even though he was born blind, with more than 20 successful albums, Wonder has, was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1989 and received the Grammy Award for Lifetime Achievement in 2005. The other very famous personality is Ray Charles. So he was one of the America's most influential musical performers and paved the way for African Americans in the music industry. He uh, uh, accomplished it all while completely blind. Ray Charles, born in 1930 in Georgia, is a great American songwriter who helped change the face of modern music. He died in 2004 after receiving a total of 13 Grammy Awards, including the Lifetime Achievement Award in 18, uh, 1987, and never want to let his blindness stop him from succeeding. Charles quipped, I don't know what I'd do if I wasn't able to hear. Louis Braille, who you would have, you all would have heard her name, the famous lady who invented the braille system. S uh, sorry, the famous, uh, his, she, actually he was uh, the inventor of braille. Born in France in 1819, braille is the inventor of the modern braille system which uses a series of raised dot formations to spell letters and words. This allows visually impaired individuals to use their fingers to read books and important signs in public areas. Braille was blinded at the age of three after he was hit in the eye by a tool in his father's barn. Uh, then uh, another very famous personality, Galileo, though he was not blind, he had some visual impairment. Uh, later it, uh, in his life, he was, he suffered uh, visually more. So he was known as the father of modern science. Italian scientist and scholar, Galileo was a visionary even though he was visually impaired. Born in 1564 in Pisa, Italy, Galileo was an inventor and astronomer whose theories on the earth's place in the universe and laws of motion helped shape modern science as we know it. A prolific inventor, Galileo is cre credited with inventing the modern telescope, thermometer and compass. Another very famous personality was Herbert, uh, Harriet Tubman. 
and she led hundreds of slaves out of darkness even though she lived in partial darkness herself. She was in so, uh, a social activist, was a true American hero and, always, uh, and though she was partially blind. She was born a slave in 1820, sold as a slave as a child, but she escaped the south and became a leading abolitionist in the Civil War era. Claude Monet is one of the art's most important and influential figures and the leader of the Impressionist movement. Born in Paris in 1840, Monet was a rebel from an early age, preferring to spend his time outside sketching nature rather than being confined to a classroom. So we can say that uh, the people who are not very much having some kind of visual impairment, they always want to go out and do something very creative in which they get satisfaction. Then this person, Bosley, he, he is one of the world's most, world's most famous opera singers and he is totally blind. He is a man that overcame many odds to become a household name worldwide. Born in 1958 in Italy, he went blind at age of 12 when a blow to his head during a soccer game further complicated his congenital glaucoma. The famous Joseph Pulitzer, the prize, very famous prize on his name. He was a journalist, a music lover, a very good name in literature, born in Hungary, migrated to United States and began his reporting career. He entered into politics, winning a state legislature seat in Missouri. He was known for his hard stance against corruption and illegal gain. And I will just finish with this lady because there are so many personalities and it is not possible to discuss everyone here. So I have discussed a few and uh, th this one Marla, she is, was the Olympic runner, never let her disability slow her down. She was born in 1969 in California, has a disease which degenerated her eyes condition and caused her to become legally blind, a three-time national champion in the women's 5,000 meter. She completed in the 1,500 meters fin final and she also competed in 2000 Olympics in Sydney, Australia. An avid a marathon runner with a master's degree in special education and it is very important and very unique. Uh, just to empower herself, she got, uh, she did a lot after getting this degree and she is a professional motivational speaker, encourage people to look past barriers and reach their full potential. So th these are a few personality, I, we just not forget them and must motivate all the people who are visually impaired to be successful in their life. What are the challenges these visual uh, loss uh, presents? As they uh, widely vary in their abilities, maybe uh, intellectual, uh, emotional, sport ability, etc. And we just cannot come to know. Then visual efficiency. Visual efficiency is how well a person can use sight is an important com concept. So whatever is there uh, in, as a potential, it should be fully exploited. So visual efficiency influences how individuals learn best through visual, tactile or auditory channels and what accommodations students profit from the most. Accommodation means uh, uh, what should be the organization of the classroom, what should be the management of the classroom, what are the additional requirement, what are the requirement of additional equip equipments, whether in the form of assistive technology, lighting, brails, etc., adapted material, text, enlarged prints, etc. And the major challenge is how to mainstream them because all the uh, visually impaired uh, people just they do not need a very specific kind of education 
they need certain support and they can very well uh, excel in the class of general students. So, it is important to mainstream these children so that they could, could achieve their uh, potential. Now, I will discuss the low vision and bl blindness. So, low vision is visual loss results when the body's mechanism for vision is damaged or obstructed in such a way that object in the environment cannot be perceived or understood. There are three important factors that affect the problems these individual face. The first is degree of loss, how much uh, visual impairment is there. Age when the, lo when the loss occurs, age is very important because if it happens after two years, the child contains some kind of idea in his or her mind because till that time he or she learns a lot through the environment and type of loss whether congenital or accidental. So, these three factors are very important when we talk about low vision or blindness. Uh, now, I will discuss a few definitions of low vision and blindness. Uh, visual disabilities or impairment including blindness means an impairment in vision that even with correction adversely affects child's educational performance. So, it is very important to understand that whether less or more visual disabilities always affect or uh, um, impair the child's educational performance. Then low vision, a level of vision which with standard correction hinders an individual in the planning and or execution of a task but which permits enhancement of the functional vision through the use of optical or non-optical devices, environmental modifications and techniques. So, it is important to understand that low vision could always be corrected and cannot, can, be, uh, um, can be totally avoided with the help of proper uh, correction. Uh, glass wearing of glasses, optical and non-optical devices as well as some kind of modification in the environment and some, some kind of assistive technology. Then blindness, when visual equity worse than 20 upon 400 with the best possible correction or with a visual field of 10 degrees or less. In India, the Persons with Disability Act 1995 has defined person with low vision and blindness. So, we must follow those definitions while we talk about blindness and low vision in our uh, context. So, person with low vision is a person with impairment of visual functioning even after treatment or with standard refractive correction, but who uses or potentially capable of using vision for the planning or execution of a task with appropriate assistive device. Then blindness refers to a condition where a person suffers from any of the following conditions namely total absence of sight or second visual equity not exceeding 6160 or 20 12 00 in the better eye with correcting lenses or limitation of the field of vision subtending an angle of 20 degree or worse. So, these are the units which define the uh, visual impairment. These are the two definitions given in the uh, Persons with Disability Act 1995. And now, I will discuss with you the process of vision to understand better what should be the role of technology and education in this process. So, when people see normally, four elements must be present and operating. The first very important is light because only after reflection we understand and read something, see something, then something that reflects light. Third is an eye processing the reflected image into electrical impulses and a brain receiving and giving meaning to these impulses. So, a, a healthy eye is important, a healthy brain is important because all the processing takes place in the brain and uh, uh, of course, two major physical things 
should be available that is right, light and a surface to reflect the light or an object to reflect the light. I would like to show you the structure of eye, uh, very simple uh, what we see is pupil, uh, cornea and iris which is not visible from outside. These are the uh, muscles which contracts and leaves the cornea. Then inside the eye vitreous humor, optic nerve which connects the eye to the brain, macula spot is there you can see a dark spot macula and retina. Retina is a very important organ of eye because it contains so many sensitive cells which process the uh, function of eye. So, in the process light rays enter the front of the eye through the cornea which is transparent and curved. Then the iris the colored part of the eye expands and contracts in response to the intensity of light it receives. So, you will always feel then that when there is very bright light we always try to shut our eyes because iris controls the opening and closing of the eye. Then the pupil, it is the opening in the center of the iris. Light rays pass through the pupil to the lens which is behind the iris. The lens brings an object seen into focus by changing its thickness. So, lens plays, an, uh, lens also play very important role because it brings the object into focus. The process of adjustment by the lens to bring things that are close and those that are far away into fo focus is known as accommodation. So, accommodation is the process through which lens adjusts itself and tries to uh, uh, bring the objects into focus whether it is very far or whether it is very close. Then the lens focuses light rays into the retina. The inside lining at the back of the eye, it is made up of photosensitive cells that react to light rays and send message along the optic nerve to the visual center of the brain. And there the process of light process of uh, further process take place and we are able to see. Now, I, I would like to show you a small video just to make it more clear. Nature has located the eye close to the brain so that its messages may arrive there quickly. The eyeball is completely surrounded by a layer of soft fatty tissue and placed within a bony orbit where eye is protected. Seeing from inside, the protected position of the eyeball within its funnel shaped eye socket is shown still more clearly. Note that this is a white stalk called optic nerve which connects the eye to the brain and also these muscles which move the eyeball. This is the empty eye socket within the skull with its bony wall inside and a bony orbit in front. The capsule of the eyeball seems to have three layers. This thick tough outer layer is called the sclera and serves to protect the delicate structure within. This transparent bulging portion is called the cornea. There is also a crystalline lens which is one of the main parts of the human eye. The second layer is called the choroid. It consists of three different zones. The first zone is called choroid proper and it is the part that carries nourishment to the tissues of the eye. The next zone is called the ciliary body. This is the broad ring shaped band of thin muscle fibers 
which plays a very active and vital role in the vision adjustment of the eye. The third zone is a well-known iris which expands and contracts the pupil much like the diaphragm of the camera. The innermost layer of the eyeball is the retina, a very delicate membrane. The retina is actually the part of the optic nerve which transmits the light impulses to our brain. The retina is the most important and complex structure in the eyeball. It consists of a complicated arrangement of rods and cones which convert light waves into nerve impulses. Between the lens and the cornea is the aqueous humor consisting mostly of water and a little salt. This largest space within the eye is filled with vitreous humor consisting chiefly of water mixed with salt and albumin. It is a highly transparent jelly-like substance and plays a very important role in visual adjustment. The reflected light of the world enters through the crystal transparency of the cornea, pupil, aqueous humor, lens and vitreous humor which is a clear gel-like substance that fills the middle of the eye and then projects on to the photoreceptors of the retina which is a photosensitive tissue lying at the back of the eye. The macula is a very small area at the center of the retina that gives us a fine pinpoint center of vision. The area of retina surrounding the macula gives us a peripheral or side vision. The retina converts the light rays into the signals that are sent to the optic nerve and then to the brain. Continual adjustment of the pupil and lens regulates the entry and focusing of light. Every blink helps our eyes' natural defense system. The tear film retains moisture and maintains visual acuity. Tear gland secretes the tear fluid, which contains important natural disinfectants to keep bacteria away and it drains through the tear duct into the nose after flushing and cleaning the entire eye surface and thus the tear system washes away impurities to maintain eye health. So uh I hope you would uh, come to know about the come to know about the process of uh, vision. Now I will uh, discuss with you the major problems and where are the uh, and how it these arise. So types of visual loss, visual efficiency is influenced by many factors including the person's equity and peripheral vision environmental conditions and psychological variables. Visual equity is the term which denotes that how well a person can see at various distances. Peripheral vision is the width of a person's field of vision on the ability to perceive objects outside the direct line of vision and this aspect of vision helps people move freely through their environment and to see large objects and movement. Severe limitation in peripheral vision is known as tunnel vision 
or restricted central vision. And due to this tunnel vision, we just are able to see a very restricted path and we cannot move freely in our environment. Then residual vision is uh, known as the amount of vision left and can be further developed. The vision of some is a static remaining the same from day to day, whereas others find that their ability to see varies by the time of day and as the day, day sets. So, uh, sometimes the person is quite able, uh, can see objects very well during day time, but as the day sets down, he or she may feel some kind of difficulty in uh, seeing the objects. For some higher or lower level of illumination effect how well they can see, for some lighting levels does not ex, uh, affect, for some distance and contrast significantly affect, contrast in the sense the color, the intensity of the color or the distance far, uh, one can see from very far distance or other cannot see. So, some are color blind and others are not. And for, for most optical aids such as glasses have positive effect in all these conditions. For practical purpose or to understand education of a child in a better way, we can classify low vision and blindness as per our need. So, low vision is the degree of visual loss wherein the individual uses sight to learn and to execute tasks, but visual disabilities interfere with daily functioning. Blindness is the degree of visual loss wherein the individual uses touch and hearing to learn and does not have functional use of sight. So, we will keep these two definitions in our mind when we talk about education of children with special needs. Uh, so, types of visual loss, there are uh, as we come to know about the different parts of eyes. So, types of visual loss are also associated with those uh, parts of the eyes. The first is condition of the eyes in general. So, myopia, hyperopia and astigmatism, these are the three conditions. Myopia is uh, known as the nearsightedness and condition that allows to focus on objects close, uh, but not at a distance. So, we can see very well the objects with, which are close to us, but not the objects, those objects which are kept at a distance. Hyperopia is the farsightedness and condition allows focus on subjects at a distance, but not close. And the third condition is astigmatism, any eye disorder that produces images on the retina that are not equally in focus. Then conditions of eye muscle, there are two conditions which are related to the condition of eye muscles and affected by the eye muscles. First is stabismus. It is important alignment, alignment of the two eyes causes two images to be received by the brain with the possible result of one eye becoming non-functional and the nystagmus is the rapid involuntary movements of the eye that interfere with bringing objects into focus. Then conditions of cornea, iris and lens. First is glaucoma, the fluid in the eye is restricted causing pressure to build up and damage the retina. So, the pressure which is inside the eye, it uh, damages the re uh, retina, the fluid which is there, pressure develops in that fluid and it in turn damage the retina. An iridia is underdeveloped iris due to lack of pigment results in extreme sensitivity towards light and cataract, it is a very common term and you would all have heard about it. It is the opac opacity of the crystalline lens and uh, the lens becomes uh, opaque, a cloudy film covers the lens of the eye and in turns it, uh, the person is not able to see the object very clearly. Then condition of retina, the first one is diabetic retinopathy. Uh, due to the condition of diabetes, diabetes it happens and changes in the eyes, blood vessels 
uh, and it becomes very severe if diabetes is not controlled. Macular degeneration, it is the de damage to the small area near the center of the retina results in restricted fine central vision and difficulties in reading and uh, writing. Retinopathy of prematurity, it is ex if excess oxygen is uh, available to infants, it may cause retinal damage and which is usually permanent in nature. Condition of retina, uh, the fourth one is the condition of retina. Retina is very important part of the eye. Uh, it is retinal detachment. Detachment of the retina interrupts transmission of visual information to the brain. And if we are able to see and the signals are not going to brain, then it becomes useless. Then retinous pigmentosa, genetic eye disease leads progressively to blindness. Night blindness is the first symptom. Then retinoblastoma is the tumor which is uh, usually very dangerous condition. Then the last is the condition of the optic nerve, the nerve which connects eyes to the brain. And if it is uh, some uh, problem is there, then uh, atrophy and reduced function of the optic nerve and which in turns affect the process of vision. What is the age of onset? Actually, the um, uh, fun dysfunctioning of eye is also associated with the age. If the uh, person is blind by birth, so it happens during infancy and it is known as congenital blindness. Then the second is adventitious blindness. It occurs after some time or age of two and legally blind when the person is able to get the benefits, constitutional benefits is known as legally blind. So, why it is important to understand age of onset? As I told you earlier, if sight is lost after the age of 2, individual will remember somewhat some object look like. The later the disability occurs, the more they remember. Visual memory is an important factor in learning. So, if the person gets blind after the age of 2, so some kind of memory is there and the person will be able to understand and learn important factors of uh, any subject. Then characteristics of students with low vision. It is important to understand while planning some kind of educational program for children with visual impairment, what are the characteristics. So, first of all, they can read print and typically access the general education curriculum along with other children. So, students with low vision can read the prints. The major uh, change which we could do is making the large availability, available the textbooks which are having large prints. And they mostly do require accommodations with some extra assistance from classmates and teachers. So, reading standard print, vast majority learn to read and write as we uh, discussed earlier that we learn through reading more than to listening. So, vast majority learn to read and write, watch television and use their vision to function in the society. Reading rate slower and make, may take more time in completing reading assignment. And sometimes they cannot read smaller prints and specifically the uh, prints which is there in newspaper and magazines. But we are lucky enough that this time due to te digital technology, we can have a newspaper online and we can read the large prints also. A reading in large prints and uh, when they are not able to read small prints, we can provide them the enlarged prints textbooks. And the government must take this responsibility and try to available the enlarged print version of textbooks to the students with visual impairment. And again, I can say that with digital technology, it is possible to uh, adjust the size of the alphabets. 
if we are using iPad or computer or tablets, students who have good central vision but a limited visual field may not get benefit from enlarged print text and for them it will be a hindrance. So, audio versions, personal readers or computer generated print to voice system may be a good idea and will helpful. And the characteristics who are blind, they need printed materials that have been translated into non-print form, recorded print to speech and braille. They typically use aids to move around independently and for some learning how to socialize and interact easily with others does not come naturally. So, they need that kind of training also. And reading braille is very important for, for them because it is the textile, tactile system of reading and writing. Braille is a coded system of dots embossed on paper so that individual can feel the page and of the text. A few pictures you can see of braille. Uh, braille alphabet dots are there and uh, small uh, alphabets are there for one dot for A, two dots for B, two uh, uh, horizontal dots for C. So, you can see two vertical dots for B and three dots for D, diagonal dots for E. So, th in this way they learn the braille and the braille is different for different languages. And the, these are for um, block letters, braille alphabets and numbers you can check for 0, 3 dots for 1, 1. So, in this way they learn the codes, alphabet and numbers. They use, they touch the dots and learn. And there are certain difficulties no doubt while learning braille. The first is and very important one is non-availability of the material. It is also very cumbersome and slow and uses different codes for different types of uh, reading. For example, it is different for maths and for music. Teachers not knowing how to teach or use braille method, they are not trained properly. Increasing availability of audio version of books is a very good alternative to braille system. Immediate computerized print to voice translators are available these days. And difficulties in difficulty in both cost and time of getting braille version of book etc. The next very important training which is required which is required by a blind person is the training in orientation and mobility shortly known as o OM. Here the child or the individual learns to move around in the environment and it is very important uh, because students with low, very low visual efficiency need special orientation and mobility training to increase their ability to move independently. Uh, orientation is the mental map people use to move through environments, a topic of instruction for students who are blind. And mobility is the ability to travel safely and efficiently from one place to another, a topic of instruction for students who are blind. So, these two topics are very important. First is mental map and the second is the ability to travel safely and efficiently. So, while a person is walking, the cane is tapped on the ground and makes a sound. It helps the user know when a hallway ends and when start begins and end and when doors are reached. A long cane does not always help the individual avoid many obstacles found in modern society. So, there is again a technology which has made this kind of cane or stick very uh, useful. So, uh, to avoid in protruding undetectable and overhanging objects, there are improvised sticks and canes. So, these are laser cane allows the safe travel. This resembles a long cane, but adds a device that emits three invisible beams. When a beam is not returned to the device, a sound alerts the user that he or she is approaching a step down. 
I a vibrator signals that there is an obstruction ahead. Global positioning technology has made it easier. So, technology is uh, also improving the stakes and canes and along with the GPRS system, it has been made more comfortable for the people who are blind. Even when an individual is using a cane or a guide dog, there are times such as when she or he is crossing a road. So, it is important for us to address some issues that be sure that person wants help. Ask the individual in order to uh, help the whenever he or she requires the help. If she requires the help, then guide the individual by offering your arm, holding it in a relaxed position. The individual usually will gently grasp your arm or above your elbow and will walk slightly behind you or to your side. Then enjoy a conversation and walk with ease. So, there are few steps which we can take up very easily and comfortably and assist a person who, who requires the help. There are certain tips for classroom management also. So, it is important to make all rules clear, even those implied in games and social situations. State rules positively and describe the environment to the student with visual loss. Discuss rules so that they will, they are well understood and remind the students of rules before time of high probability in fractions like group act interaction, sorry, group activities, assemblies, etc. Review rules periodically because every time the same rule may not be required. Using full descriptions of the environment and the situations because you can change, you modify the environment according to the need of the child. Be sure rules are consistently applied. Reward students for following the rules and explain the consequences for breaking the rules and apply them systematically. Uh, prevalence according to WHO, there are over 285 million people who are visually impaired. About 90 percent of the world's visually impaired live in developing countries. So, globally uncorrected refractive errors are the main cause of visual impairment and the number of people visually impaired from infectious disease are, has greatly reduced in the last 20 years. Maybe the uh, reason the health issues are well taken care of, immunization issues are well taken care of. So, they are helping in reducing the number and 80 percent of all visual impairment can be avoided or cured. The causes of visual impairment as we discussed earlier could be uh, congenital or accidental. Major cause for blindness are infections, disease, malnutrition and vitamin A deficiency. It is also transferred through mothers during pregnancy. Almost half of the children who are blind are disabled due to prenatal factors mostly hereditary. So, preventions are also there and could are very easy to follow. For example, medical treatments are there. In progressive disease treatments such as improving the child's diet or supplementing their diets with vitamins. Vitamin A supplement is very uh, useful, minimizing sugar care uh, intake to avoid diabetes. Then assessment of children under regular health checkups in schools will be helpful in identifying visual impairment. Teachers and parents aware of possible signs of visual impairment will be able to identify such students soon and will be able to provide right kind of environment. Safety measures are also important wearing glasses and public education needs to go beyond schools. Teachers should encourage to uh, follow certain restriction and security measures. And specific needs of students must we must know that child's text should be near to the teacher's table blackboard and classroom door. Distracting glare should be reduced to minimum on the blackboard. Child's desk, desk, desk should be away from light source, but in a well lighted area, allowing a child to come closer to the presentation to enhance opportunity to see. And 
uh, that is all and uh, a few more we can make the classrooms soundproof and uh, there should be no uh, hindrance or obstacles in the classroom there should be ample area for free movement. So, in a way we can uh, manage the disability very well if we uh, modify the environment of the classroom and teaching methods. With this note, thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us a very prolific session where we try to understand about how, how we could empower the children with the special needs, especially when we are talking about children with a visual impairment and uh, our objective is to uh, make them, uh, make them uh, stand on their own so that uh, they could see the world around them with their own abilities, uh, not rather than their disabilities because a disability uh, could be replaced by ability when we provide them all the opportunities. With this note, uh, thank you ma'am, thank you once again and dear friends, if you want to access this uh, lecture, then uh, we would be uploading this lecture very soon on the YouTube with the help of which you can access it the number of times you want it uh, as well as uh, you can give your feedback later on mm. at info.cc at the rate nic dot yeah. in. And I must acknowledge YouTube for uh, taking the video to show you the process of functioning of I. Thank you ma'am, thank you once lot. again. Thanks.